modern Mongolian, the confederation is called Karaid. In English, the name is primarily adopted as Karaites. In Turkic, Kara for black, Swarthy. There have been various other Mongol and Turkic tribes with names involved in the term. Mongol legend traced the clan back to eight brothers with unusually dark faces and the confederation they founded. One empire which has been frequently mentioned has been the Gokturk Khanate or the Turkic Khanate. The Turkic people originated from the Eastern Eurasian steppe, i.e. modern-day Mongolia. If you've ever done any reading about the Mongols, especially in older literature, you've probably seen them called Tatars or Tartars, which almost every group of people they encountered called them. The Mongols are the descendants of the ancient Hunnic peoples, and the Turks are also descendants of the ancient Hunnic peoples. The Gokturk Khanate or Turkic Khanate originated within modern-day Mongolia and is famous for being the first major Turkic empire to be recorded in history. So ethnically, there is some relationship between the Turks and the Mongols. During the 13th century, Mongols were called Tatars by their contemporaries. It is not clear how the name Tatar spread west. One possible method of transmission is from the Karak Tai Khanate. Before we discuss the Mongol conquest of the Karakatai, first will be an overview of this fascinating empire. China was thrown into chaos after the fall of the mighty Tang Dynasty in 907. In the north, the Khitans, related to the Mongols and famed for their cavalry, established the Lao Dynasty. Around the Tang Lao period, a classification system developed that grouped the tribes into White Tatars, Black Tatars, and Raw or Wild Tatars. Under their leader, Ye Ludashi, the Lao established a vast empire across Central Asia, battling the rising Han Chinese Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty officials in the 1220s still used this system, describing Chinggis Khan as a Black Tatar. The Lao were powerful with a unique system of government, giving separate administration to the steppe and to the sedentary populations it ruled over. Karakitai invasion defeated the Western Karakhanids in Kujind in 1137. In 1141, Karakitai became the dominant force in the region. Several military commanders of Karakhanid lineages escaped from Karakhanid lands during the Karakitai invasion. The Karakitai, however, did not destroy the Karakhanid dynasty. Instead, they stayed at Semi-Reach and allowed some of the Karakhanids to rule as vassals, with the Karakhanids acting as their tax collectors and administrators. Like the Lao, women maintained high status in the Karakatai, and two of five Girhans were women. Specific Lao customs continued, such as the divide between sedentary and nomadic administration, and that rulers and their consorts all had to come from the two royal clans, the Yelu and the Zhao. It is often hypothesized that vague retellings of this battle, a non-Muslim force defeating the mightiest Muslim king of the time, traveled west and became the origins of the Prester John legend. They were defeated by Genghis Khan in 1203 and became influential in the rise of the Mongol Empire and were gradually absorbed into the succeeding Turco-Mongol Khanates during the 13th century. If the Turkish people originated in the Eastern Eurasian steppe, modern-day Mongolia, how did they end up in modern-day Turkey? And what is the connection between the Turkic people of the Eastern Eurasian steppe and the Turkish people of the modern Turkish nation? Ethnically, there is some relationship between the Turks and the Mongols. The Mongols in the western side of the empire became more Turkic than Mongol. They tend to be called Turco-Mongols and later Tatars especially once that was how they identified themselves, sometime in the 15th or 16th centuries. The Crimean Khanate was little Tartary. From our research, there were three main civilizations in America that contributed to the Tartarian outposts that were here in ancient times. 
Siberia was Great Tartary or Russian Tartary. The famous Aztec calendar spell. Now they claiming it for the Hindu. But are we saying that that these people here got it from them over there in India? Or that we are in the third India? And that the same third India has always been here. This third India we are in is very relevant. When we bring up the topic of the River Euphrates in America, you're going to see this depiction, this painting right here from Jan Felton, Arch Library University of Amsterdam. The River Euphrates in America. What aren't they telling you? River Euphrates in America. This is probably an error, they say. The, the Euphrates River is far from America, right? That's what I thought. But geographical accuracy clearly is not an issue. Okay. So they got to put a disclaimer out there. Ethnically, there is some relationship between the Turks and the Mongols. During the 13th century, Mongols were called Tatars by their contemporaries. Negroes, as was said, were deified in early Greece. They appeared as gods in Greek mythology. The chief title of Zeus, the greatest of the Greek gods, was Ethiopes, which means black. The earliest of gods and messiahs on all continents were black. 